let's take a look at a uh, specific report in Vigilus. So let's uh, expand the uh, product family to medical and click on this product medical. You can see that this image has been generated by a Yocto project for image core image minimal, and it's for IMX6 quad in this case uh, with Linux kernel 419. So uh, scrolling down, we can start by looking at a summary of a security report or vulnerability report. You can see that there are 78 vulnerabilities that are unfixed. Um, those vulnerabilities are divided into uh, user space and the Linux kernel space. The more detailed report is down below for packages. You can see on the left-hand side a list of packages. And um, also you have this color coding here, which represents the severity of a vulnerability as assessed by um, organization that uh, keeps the info on vulnerabilities. You can see, for example, that a system D package has two critical vulnerabilities, five uh, high priority vulnerabilities and two mediums. And so similar information is available for every single package. And well, let's click list on a system D and uh, you can see um, here details for all the vulnerabilities as reported for a system D package. There is a version of a package that's currently in the system. There is a list of vulnerabilities. There is a status for each vulnerability. There's also the scoring level, CDSS version three scoring and the attack vector. There is a separate column, fixed version, that shows for some vulnerabilities what version of a package contains already a fix. So let's expand one of these uh, vulnerabilities. The fix for this vulnerability is available in version 242. It's already um, integrated into that version, but I can also take a look, close look at the patch in open source that implements the fix. We provide the link through this interface right here. So let's uh, take a closer look at another package which represents a Linux kernel itself. Um, let's click on it. The vulnerability information is represented in a similar way. So the names of columns are identical. Um, you can see that the one of the two of the rows are highlighted, which means that these two vulnerabilities showed up uh, in the last scan. Let's expand one of these uh, entries for the Linux kernel. And here you can see the information on the uh, kernel patch for this particular vulnerability. There's a direct link. There's also a Linux kernel configuration option that uh, this vulnerability is associated with. So um, this issue or vulnerability is reported only if this vulnerability is part of your Linux kernel configuration. On the left hand side, you can see that the kernel config filter is applied, which means that the Linux kernel configuration for this particular image is applied. And uh, what would happen if I disable that? Well, let's take a closer look. Um, right now we have 45 Linux kernel vulnerabilities with the Linux kernel filter applied. If we disable it through this interface, which means let's remove, uh, let's show all the vulnerabilities that are reported, you can see that the number of vulnerabilities reported for the Linux kernel is 175. It represents vulnerabilities which uh, do not apply also to uh, this particular Linux product because they are not in a configuration. So let's apply the filter back. This is a unique feature of this interface that you're not gonna find elsewhere. Similar functionality uh, is available also for U-Boot Bootloader, since it's can, it can be configured for specific features, peripherals. Uh, Vigilus allows you to specify which U-Boot options are in your configuration. Let's take a closer look next at the triaging functionality of the Vigilus interface. For every vulnerability, uh, when we triage that information, we can enter a note. So, we assess uh, whether a vulnerability applies to a specific product or not. I can save this note. Uh, every note is tagged with a name of a person who entered it so that uh, team members can see who entered that information. And eventually I can also whitelist a specific vulnerability, which means that in future triages, um, this vulnerability is not going to be part of the report. 
I can generate a report uh, for others as a spreadsheet. I can also generate a PDF file. Let's uh, generate a full report for this particular manifest. It will take you seconds for the report to open up. And once it opens up, you can see uh, here is a PDF with all the information that we've seen so far online captured in this PDF file, which can be then attached to uh, release reports, uh, daily reports, however, whatever process a company may have for keeping um, security information for the product. Next, let's take a look at the history for this particular software manifest. Let's view the scanning history. Um, you can see that scanning started in November of last year, and uh, there were no fixes introduced in this uh, software manifest. Therefore, the number of vulnerabilities has been increasing over time. This particular interface allows me to uh, run a comparative report between two specific releases. So if uh, March 24th represents a release, the current release, I can compare the report against a scan um, from December, which can represent another release of this particular software for a product. So you can see that there is 59 new vulnerabilities that have been logged against the software manifest between these two timestamps, between potentially two separate releases. So how can I follow uh, vulnerabilities without having to physically uh, rerun the scan every single time I want to capture new information? I simply access this uh, report under a product. And on the right-hand side, you can see that um, I can subscribe to notifications that would be provided to me either daily, weekly, or monthly. Therefore, every single time there is a new vulnerability that's reported against this software manifest uh, or a fix, I will receive an information, an email, a notification that, that captures all that info. So how do I get the software manifest up to Vigilus interface, you may ask? Um, there are several options for doing it. You can generate a software manifest from Yonkdo, from Tamsys Factory, BuildRoot, or any other build system and upload that software manifest into this interface. If you are using NXP Yonkdo, the Vigilus functionality is integrated into uh, the Yonkdo project and the upload um, can happen automatically. In the interface, you can see that there is a concept of a product, which uh, is really a, something that associates um, scans that you're running with a specific product. On the left-hand side, you can see that there is a uh, create product action item. So here I can specify the intended product name. Um, let's uh, add something a bit more meaningful, like uh, product for automotive. And uh, let's give it uh, some sort of a designated number, X25. And uh, we can add a description here. We can import whitelisted from any other scans, same for um, notes. Once saved, we have an area right now in Vigilus for the product where we can upload um, different um, software manifests that we're going to scan. Another feature of uh, Vigilus interface allows us to create a software manifest entirely online. So sometimes we want to simply track vulnerabilities for select packages. Uh, let's uh, type in here some of the packages. I'm going to pick uh, BusyBox. Uh, we can leave the version info empty or we can add it. Let's add one more, OpenSSL, for example. And uh, we can specify version 0 0.9 and save. OK, so at this point, when we click on a save button, we're going to generate a security vulnerability uh, report for these two packages only. As you can see, uh, the report has been generated. There are 81 user space vulnerabilities identified, and I can access the information just as before. So before we proceed, let's uh, rename this software manifest to something more meaningful. 
Um, you can see I changed it to partial API. And let's scroll down. So here we have all the detailed information on vulnerabilities, just like we've seen it before. On top of the screen, you can see that I'm in a private workspace. This is a default location where Vigilus is going to store the software manifest that you generated with the online interface. And so from here, I can move it to a specific product. There is those action icons. And here I can uh, specify uh, what I want to copy or move the software manifest and then which uh, product I want to associate it with. So here's our product automotive X25. Let's click submit. And uh, at this point, this um, software manifest disappeared from this list. If I go to a dashboard, you can see that under product automotive X25, I have our partial API um, software manifest. Last but not least feature of the Vigilus interface allows us to search for specific uh, vulnerabilities or vulnerabilities that apply for a to a specific package. So just like uh, before where we were generating a custom um, software manifest, uh, in this case, I'm just uh, running a scan for uh, vulnerabilities on a given package. And I selected BusyBox here. And here we have a list of vulnerabilities that apply to it. That's it in terms of a Vigilus demo. Thanks for watching.